Hey everybody, uh, it's time for today's episode of Time to Draw with Mr. Shaw. Uh, today we're going to be drawing a couple of characters from one of my favorite cartoons on Cartoon Network. It's The Amazing World of Gumball. Uh, so while we're working, you'll need something to draw on, a piece of paper, either a pencil, a pen, a crayon, a marker, whatever you have lying around the house to draw with. I'll be starting out with some simple shapes and getting more detailed as we go. If you get stuck, you can always pause the video, you can rewind it, you can watch it again, keep practicing, and each time you draw it, you'll get a little bit better every time. So let's get started. Um, we're going to be drawing Gumball and his adopted brother, Darwin. Um, and both of them have very similar shaped heads, so we're going to draw them right next to each other. And I'm going to start out with two ovals. Now I'm going to draw these very lightly because this is just the bottom shape of the whole shape of their head. So I'm going to draw Darwin first. I'm going to just do an oval, kind of going side to side like that, a little oval laying down. And then I'm going to draw Gumball's face, his oval, pretty close to Darwin's, but a little higher up. Gumball's a little higher than Darwin, or a little taller than Darwin. So I'm going to draw his head a little higher up. After that, on the top of Darwin's head, I'm just going to draw a nice round bump coming around kind of like this. Uh, it's not quite a full circle. I guess we could call that a semicircle. Some people like to call it a dome or a hemisphere if it were three-dimensional. And then I'm going to do the same thing for Gumball. I'm going to start about halfway through this curve and I'm just going to draw a round shape coming all the way around his head like that. Now those of you who watch the cartoon might kind of recognize the shape of their heads now. So I'm going to darken uh, the outline. That's the outer shape of their heads coming all the way around like this. And then I'm going to erase that curved line in the middle so that this looks like one solid shape. And I'll do the same with Gumball over here on this side. Then I'm erasing that line in the middle. And now we can start drawing their shapes in their, of their face and of their bodies. I'm going to go ahead and work on Darwin first and then we'll get back over to Gumball. So Darwin has two nice big circle shaped eyes. One of them just a little left to the center of his face, and the other one pretty close to the right-hand side, right about here. I'm going to draw two black circles inside of those eyes. And then I'm going to give him two small black rectangles for his eyebrows, kind of hovering up above both of his eyes. I want Darwin to be smiling so his eyebrows can be up. If you want your Darwin to be angry, you could always turn those eyebrows down or sad. They could be tilted in the other direction. Um, and then when I draw his mouth, I'm going to start with a straight line, just a little bit under his eyes. I'm starting kind of the center of his eye here and the center of his eye here. And then I'll draw a curved line just like that, connecting the two ends of that little line. Inside of his mouth, I'll draw another curved line for his tongue. Um, if you're only working with a pencil and you want to shade that in a little bit. You could absolutely do that. If you plan on coloring it later with some crayons or some markers or colored pencils, you don't have to do that. Um, now Darwin is a fish, so I'm going to draw a little fin, a little curved line, coming out right from where those two shapes initially touched right here. And I'm going to draw two little lines on it just like this. After that, I'm going to draw Darwin's arm on this side hanging down. It's going to be most of an oval. I don't want to complete that shape all the way around. In fact, I'm going to erase the line here where it touches his face so it looks like it's coming out on this side of his head. Darwin's other arm, however, is coming down on the other side of his head. So we're not going to see where it touches. And I'm going to leave that line right there to make it look like this hand is behind his head. Now Darwin has two long skinny legs. And I found the easiest way to draw them is to start with the line down the middle first. Then I'm going to draw parallel lines on both sides of that center line, but not all the way down. I'm going to start with that center point down at the bottom of this line, and I'm going to curve it around in this direction, and then curve it around in this direction to make Darwin's two feet. Now, when Darwin's standing like this with his feet pointed in opposite directions, he's symmetrical. That means he's the same on both sides. So anytime I draw two lines on this side, I'm going to copy those two lines on this side. He has a circle and a sneaker here, and another one here, and then he has a diagonal line on this toe, and a diagonal line on this toe. And now, Darwin's finished. Now we'll move over to Gumball. Now Gumball's face, his eyes are almost exactly the same, so I'm going to draw 
those nice two big circles here and here. I'm going to color in those smaller black circles on the inside and then two black rectangles raised up above his eyes here and here. Now Darwin's mouth is a little bit more complicated or I'm sorry Gumball's mouth is a little bit more complicated than Darwin's. Uh, one trick that I found that's really handy for this is to first draw uh, just under this left eye kind of a long oval like this. Now that's not Gumball's nose. It's actually going to be his nose and uh, kind of his upper lip, that cat-like upper lip, because Darwin, or I'm sorry, a Gumball is in fact a cat. So at the very top, I'm going to draw a smaller oval for his nose, and then I'm going to draw a little line coming down the middle just like that. Then I can draw a long curved line coming from this corner of his upper lip to this corner of his upper lip, just like this. And Gumball usually has a little triangle shaped tooth in the corner there. And then just like Darwin, a nice curved shape for his tongue. Now Gumball's ears don't actually stick up all the time. They're usually drawn sticking out to the side like this. And then we can give him little lines on the sides of his cheeks to show uh, kind of the impression of whiskers. Now Gumball's body is actually more of a rounded rectangle shape. Uh, and here's what I mean. I'm going to draw first his body, just a rectangle coming down like this. I'm going to give him a smaller rectangle for the collar of his shirt. And then I'm going to draw two curved lines, almost like upside down letter U's for his shoulders. And then lines that are parallel to his middle body shape on both sides. At the bottoms of these two shapes, I'm going to draw little rectangles for the uh, cuffs of his sleeves. Oops, just made a mark on my paper. That's what erasers are for. I'll draw one here. And then I'm going to draw Gumball's hand, which is usually drawn as a circle with two little lines in it to show his fingers. Now I'm not going to draw his other one yet because he does have some pants that might be blocking that a little bit. Now when I'm drawing the pants, I like to draw a little square here for Gumball's belt and then a little curved line for the top part of his pants. After that, it's pretty similar to Darwin's legs. So I'm going to draw one, two, three straight lines coming down like this, and then a line up the middle about halfway to look like his pants. Now, just like Darwin, he has those little rectangle shapes at the bottom, and then Gumball has round feet sticking out in both directions. Now, since he doesn't wear shoes, I'm going to draw two little lines to show where his toes are. And now I can draw that other hand just because it's being blocked a little bit by his hip here. Then I can draw Gumball's tail. It's just an oval shape sticking out to the side. And now we have our two main characters from the Amazing World of Gumball. Now you could stop here or you could add some extra details. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a horizon line. That's a line that shows where the ground is and where the sky is. And I'm going to stop that line anytime it touches a character and then continue it on the other side as it goes past. Just like if my pencil was being blocked by my hand, it starts here and then continues here, but it's blocked where that object is. After that, I'm going to kind of copy the logo of the TV show, The Amazing World of Gumball. So I'm actually going to draw a rainbow going behind these two characters. I'm just going to draw some curved lines getting bigger and wider as they go out. I'm going to do three curved lines on the outside like this, but then I'm going to do some tricky lines on the inside. Watch what I do here. I'm still going to copy that curved line, but every time I touch a character, I'm going to stop, <coughs> excuse me, and I'm going to continue that line on the other side of the character. I stop when I hit gumball. I'm going to pretend I'm drawing it until I'm free again to draw it down here. And I can do a couple of those lines, kind of going through the characters, almost like they're behind the characters and they're being blocked by Darwin and Gumball because they're overlapping that rainbow. Then I can actually write the title of the show if I want. I can write in nice big capital letters, The Amazing World of and then I'm going to draw Gumball 
or I'm sorry, right gumball down here and some nice big letters. Again, when I got to Darwin's feet, I kind of stopped my lines so that these words look like they're behind the characters. G-U-M-B-A-L-L. -L. And if you, like me, enjoy watching The Amazing World of Gumball, maybe you can advertise that by hanging this picture up in your window. Uh, a lot of people in our local area have been drawing rainbows for the hashtag 518 rainbow hunt. Uh, this would be a great picture to hang up in your window if people in your neighborhood are walking around looking for those rainbows. Uh, feel free to color it in. If you do hang it up in your window, snap a picture of that. Send it to me on Class Dojo if you're a Henry Johnson scholar. If you have any ideas for something for me to teach you to draw next time, feel free to comment below. And as always, stay safe, wash your hands, and I'll see you next time.